I am Dr. Charles Adler, a neurologist at Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm going to discuss data which I will be presenting at the American Academy of Neurology meeting looking at salivary gland biopsies in patients with Parkinson's disease. Salivary glands are glands that produce saliva and they are located both underneath the jaw called the submandibular gland and in the lip itself called the minor salivary glands. We know that there are proteins in the brains of people with Parkinson's disease and that those proteins are abnormal and the way we make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease right now is to do autopsies of people who look like they have Parkinson's, autopsy the brain and look for those proteins. In a study that we've previously published, we have found that those proteins are also located in the submandibular gland in people who have been autopsied with Parkinson's disease. We looked at 28 patients with Parkinson's and all 28 patients who died had the proteins in the submandibular gland. We therefore then proceeded to do a study in which we took 15 patients with Parkinson's disease and did biopsies of the submandibular gland as well as the minor salivary gland in the lip. And the goal was to determine if those proteins were present in the living patients. What we found is that of the biopsies that we did of the submandibular gland, there were four cases that did not have enough tissue when we put the needle in there and removed the needle. Of the 11 Parkinson's patients that we did have enough tissue to look at, nine of those cases had the abnormal protein that we also see in the brain of Parkinson's patients. And thus we believe that we can make a di diagnosis of Parkinson's disease in these living individuals. When we did the minor salivary gland in the lip, the 15 cases, only one case actually had the protein there. So the minor salivary gland would not be a good biopsy location. The importance of the finding is that there currently is no diagnostic test for Parkinson's disease in living individuals. Why is that important? It's critical to make the diagnosis when we are sending Parkinson's disease patients for invasive procedures like deep brain stimulation surgery, when we do gene therapy which is now being done for research purposes, and in other research studies in which we are looking for uh, better treatments and better diagnosis of patients. Therefore, we are hoping that doing these types of biopsies is now going to give a definitive diagnosis of Parkinson's disease in the living patient. I would note that the patients that we have studied so far are all advanced Parkinson's disease patients in that they have had the disease for over five years and then they are clearly treatment responsive. What we would hope to do in the future is to study early Parkinson's disease patients to see if we can make that same diagnosis in people with disease duration less than five years. If you would like further information regarding Parkinson's disease diagnosis and treatment, please visit mayoclinic.org. Thank you.